Hello people of the earth. Welcome to Front Page Fables. Today I got some amazing Am I the Jerk stories, so sit back and relax, but before. Am I the jerk for telling everyone in the home that I will plate food from now on and clear labeling for leftovers? I have three people in the home right now. My daughter that is going to college and my son and his wife that are staying to save money. The issue is with my son and his wife. They eat so much, and frankly it is a concerning amount. What I usually do before they moved in was make a meal. Everyone eats and then pack up leftovers in the fridge. The food is gone by the time I even try to get seconds. Sometimes I make food and my daughter ain't home and it's all gone. I make big meals that can easily feed four or six people with leftovers sometimes. For example, I made a pound of spaghetti with meat sauce. I didn't even get any, I didn't grab any, and was going to eat after I finished some chores. My daughter wasn't home, and those two ate a whole pound of spaghetti. I had a two-layer cake, almost all was there, and went to work. The cake was almost gone when I got home. That was less than eight hours. My daughter is very frustrated since there is never any cooked food in the home. I have made double batches, and that gives leftovers, but they don't last. The next day the leftovers are gone. It is hurting my wallet and I am over it. I don't want to charge for groceries since that won't solve the issue with leftovers. Or if they eat everything before anyone has the chance to eat. So I sat everyone down and told them I will be plating everyone's food. That leftovers will be split evenly and labeled clearly. If anyone is still hungry, then they can buy more food to eat. I implemented it today, my daughter, and I loved it since we could at and have leftovers. They hated it and are still hungry. This started an argument, and they think I am a huge jerk. Am I the jerk for putting a tree net to stop any fruits from going onto my neighbor's yard? I'm being advised to edit this in. The box of fruit was for fruit that was prepped in some way and what I was asked about. My wife was asked for the fruit as a whole. It was when he came to me that he asked about the fruits that were prepared. I thought it was implied because of how the topic differences between me and my wife. I'm putting a next to the part I'm talking on. I'm sorry for not making that clear. Hi. I inherited a house from my dad from his passing a few years ago. His house came with a guava tree on the yard. The tree has been there for a good portion of my teen years and is special to me. Me and my wife were one day thinking of ways for extra income and realized we could literally sell off the fruit. Got the permit and started to prepare guava in different ways. For reference, I sell the fruit whole, splice and put into cups, candied, etc. We realized that while the branches weren't exactly hanging over our neighbor's lawn, sometimes guava would either fall over or buck against the fence at the right angle and end up over there. So me and my wife purchased a tree fruit net for the side of the tree that was closer to the neighbor's yard. Since then, I don't think any fruit fell to their yard, which is good. What led me here today is that last week, while my wife was out on the lawn, the neighbor's kid approached her and asked what happened to the fruits. My wife explained that we keep the fruits in a net so that we can have more. Apparently, the kid ran off and came back with their dad who asked my wife the same thing. She explained again and, from what she said, the father looked like he took it personally. Asked if we thought he was stealing and my wife explained no, we didn't think that, we just want to maximize the fruit that falls from our tree since we do use it for some profit. Today the same neighbor knocked on the door and I answered. He asked if we could talk about the fruit tree situation. He said that he thinks it's selfish how my father would freely let the fruits fall wherever, but now that I'm here I'm hoarding the fruit. I explained that the tree is my property so whatever comes from the tree is also my property. I said he could buy guava off us if he wanted, but he looked more upset that I would even recommend that. I'm glad his kid liked the fruit, but now that I'm making money off this, I can't just let that happen freely. He called me selfish again, and that I could at least spare a few. I said again he could buy some off me if he wanted. I offered a box for dollar five. Now every time we see him around he doesn't smile at us which I guess is expected, but now they let the dog poop on our lawn and keeps telling his kid loudly that the neighbors killed the fruit fairy. Some of the neighbors are still cool with us, but it's like we made an enemy from him and I'm feeling slightly guilty for the kid. Am I the jerk for telling my mom? She doesn't get to act like the victim when she named me after her late husband behind my dad's back. My mom was married to another guy before she was married to my dad. Her first husband was her childhood best friend, her first and only love until he died. They started dating as teenagers and got married in their 20s and were trying to have kids when he died. 
They were 28. My mom never loved anyone else again. She met and married my dad. But she never loved him. She married him because she was turned down as a single adoptive parent and because people in her life told her she should find a way to be happy again. I'm their only kid and she named me after her first husband. My dad didn't realize for years. Her husband's name was James, like his legal name. It's the one most people used for him. But my mom called him Hunter and guess what my name is? Hunter. She told dad she just really loved the name and my dad liked it too so he agreed. He only knew her first husband as James so never made the connection. I was 10 when my dad found out. He found some letters that he initially thought were meant for me, but realized they were to the first husband. They ended up arguing for like two weeks straight, and that's how I learned mom's feelings toward dad and why she married him. I would sit up and listen to them when I was meant to be sleeping because it weirded me out to learn I was named after her first husband. She always had him very present in our lives. We had loads of photos in the house of him, she would talk about him a lot, and it was pretty clear she was still super in love with him. I only realized last year, but something she also did was switch her wedding ring from my dad out for her original wedding ring when my dad wasn't around. I remember her changing rings a lot when I was a younger kid, and when they divorced she just always wore her original wedding ring. I wanted my name changed, and my dad does too, but mom refuses to give her consent, which we need, and the judge has insisted both parents have to consent. My relationship with mom is not good anyway. I'm not the kid she wanted because I'm not James Shunter's kid. But she also refuses to let me go and just let me be dad's kid. She'll sometimes try some performative parenting, but mostly it's sort of like we're roommates when I'm at her house instead of dad's I have to split my time every other week. The judge refused to let me make the decision. My mom's house has photos of her and James all over the place. It's like a shrine to him to them and two days ago she was crying to her former ills that we hate her and how awful my dad is to her. When the call ended I told her she doesn't get to act like the victim when she lied to dad about my name and named me after her dead husband behind dad's back and when she won't let me change my name so I'm not creeped out by the history behind my name. She called me a self-absorbed brat and told me I will never understand her grief. I told her I understood the loss was devastating for her but she used us and never even loved us, and that was shitty. Am I the jerk? Am I the jerk for not letting my sister know the name chosen for my baby? I'm 38F pregnant with my first and probably only child. My sister 36F is also pregnant, but this is her third child, and this baby comes several years after her last child who is 8 years old. I struggled with fertility problems for many years. I could not get pregnant despite trying from the age of 24. We underwent numerous tests, but no clear reason for this was ever found. We tried taking breaks between trying, we tried fertility medications in recent years, and finally last year, we went through IVF which was successful for us. You might wonder what this has to do with the name of my baby. Well, let me explain. My husband and I had a boy and a girl name chosen from pretty much the time we started trying for a baby. These were names we promised to use whenever we had a baby, and we had planned to have at least two children. Those names stayed the names throughout everything. But when my sister was pregnant with her first child, she and her husband struggled to agree on a name. She mentioned mine and my husband's chosen names once during my pregnancy and said how lucky we were to have agreed. Then when her daughter was born, she decided to use the girl name my husband and I had chosen. And she confessed that is how the name was decided on. She said her husband liked our chosen name, and she didn't think it was bad, so she decided it would be better for them to use it so their baby could have a name. She told me not to look upset because admittedly I got emotional when she said this and told me at least the name would be used. Then when her son was born, she used the name we had chosen for the same reason. They couldn't agree on another name. This did strain our relationship, and I was and still am hurt that she was so dismissive of my feelings and so blunt about what they did. She implied pretty strongly that she expected I would never have children to use the name for. Then a couple of years after her son was born, she made the comment that we agreed so easily we could find another name if it worked, implying that we could not should not use the names anymore. We ended up mixing our boy choice and our girl choice for this baby. Both had a unisex name in them, and we decided, since we loved all four names, mixing them wasn't a huge change. My sister won't like this. But honestly, we don't see each other much anymore. 
She only reached out more now because we're both pregnant at the same time, and she has asked repeatedly about the name we have chosen. I have refused to tell her. But my two brothers know. They thought I should have used the original name as intended and give our sister the middle finger. But they also understand why we chose to mix them. She sent me a very pissy text a few nights ago saying I'm being so petty and these babies should grow up close together and we should be working on our relationship and instead I am excluding her and making a point of saying I don't want her to know anything. Am I the jerk? Am I the jerk for telling my parents that my brother is using drugs? So a few months ago, I found out my F-16 brother M-22 is doing drugs, and I mean hard drugs, not some simple weed or anything like that. At first when I found out I didn't really believe it, but I kept thinking about it and eventually asked my brother. He didn't lie to me and told me the truth that he's been using for a while now, and he told me what he's been using heroin, meth, cocaine, etc., and I honestly didn't know what to say how to feel. It doesn't help that we are also in a country where all of this is extremely illegal and very expensive. I kept trying to get him to quit and try getting some help BCS whenever he comes over to our house for dinner. He looks so off and my parents used to think he was like that BCS of work. Around a week ago, I told him that I was going to his house and that we needed to talk. I told him that he needs to stop what he's doing ASAP and that I will be beside him the whole time and I won't tell anyone if he promises to quit. Otherwise, I will tell my parents, and that just ended up in a huge fight, and I basically got kicked out. So I went back to my parents' house, and I was really worried and disappointed, and I didn't really hide it, so my parents asked what's wrong, and I told them. After I told them, they told me to get in the car, and we went back to my brother's house, and we caught him using. This hurt my parents a lot, so unsurprisingly, my mom was crying, and my dad was yelling. Fast forward to now he refuses to talk to me, and if he does it's just him yelling at me about how this is my fault and things such as. I really wish he didn't have to go through all of this, and I wish I never told my parents, but I feel like I didn't have any choice. Note: He was forced to move back in with us because my parents don't trust him to be left alone now. Note 2. I did not tell my parents BCS drugs are expensive and illegal here. I only added that in BCS that also made the situation worse than it already is. I told them BCS I was scared for him sorry for any misunderstanding that may have caused. Am I the jerk for telling anyone who asks why I don't bake for our haul anymore? I really appreciate the reassurance y'all. I'm currently working and a lot of comments to get through. I don't hold anything against the kid. I'll talk to the landlord to give a heads up as many of you have recommended. Hi. I really like baking as a hobby. I don't believe in food waste, but I don't often want to eat all the stuff I make. The best way I can describe it is that I love to bake. But when it comes to eating, I'm just like meh. I'm not sure how to describe it. Anyways, I normally give my baked goods to friends and family. The tradition we have started when my brother said he couldn't come over to pick up a coconut cupcake pan because he's busy. I didn't plan for space in my fridge to keep the cupcake and awkwardly left them in the apartment's common room with permission from the security guard, of course. I left a note saying the cupcakes were free to whoever with my apartment number on it. The security guard said I had to. That started this semi-tradition of me putting whatever extra goods I have on a free table in the lobby area. Others started to do it a little too. It has worked well so far. I like the environment it has created. Problem came one of the neighbors knocked on my door. She introduced herself, said she's from another apartment floor, and that she, in a visibly upset way, was very unhappy with me leaving unattended food out. One of her kids, allergic to peanuts, had some of my peanut butter brownies. I got very nervous hearing this and apologized. She said it was fine but wanted me to pay part of the cost of getting her child help. I asked if we could talk it out and she agreed. I agreed to pay for the cab she took back and forth to the hospital, which I know if getting off easy for what happened. I apologized again, and she said all was fine, but to please be extra careful. Since then, I don't leave any food out at all, because that situation made me nervous. I know it wasn't the worst that could have happened, but still. My hall neighbor, let's call her Lily, asked if I was okay, noticing that it's been a while since I put anything out. I just told her that after what happened with the peanut butter allergy issue, I don't feel comfortable doing that anymore in case something like that happened again. Now, I didn't know Lily knew who I was talking about just based on saying the allergy issue. Specifically, they knew which kid I was talking about because they saw him take some. I guess Lily spread the word around because I got a knock from the lady again, and she asked why I told everyone to blame her. 
I explained that I did not blame or tell anyone to blame her in any way. One of our neighbors asked why the tradition died off, and I only said because of the allergy incident, but I never mentioned specifics like who at Washoe they looked etc. She's mad and says I did that purposefully and will be speaking to the landlord to make a report. I apologized again and said I swear I did not mean for this to happen, but she stormed off. I'm not exactly sure what to do now. I don't hold anything against her or the kid, and I'm pretty mad at Lily for this shit right now. Am I the jerk? Am I the jerk for letting a 16-year friendship go? I have been friends with Amy 24F since I was 10 years old. I am now 26. In 2022, I began hanging out with my now boyfriend 27M. For context, the beginnings of my relationship were rocky. Both myself and my current boyfriend made mistakes early on before getting serious and have since moved on from them. This past March was my birthday, and I was so excited because Amy was coming up from Florida to spend it with me. Months prior, I had made a plan with her and all of my other friends, four women, three men, not including my boyfriend, to have a murder mystery style party at my house. Everyone was on board and coming until two weeks before my birthday. She called to tell me that if my boyfriend was coming, she would not be coming. She told me she didn't want to give me an ultimatum, but either she came or he came. Her dislike for my boyfriend stems from past arguments between him and I, but nothing that I would consider worthy of being so angered or upset by him that you can't be in the same room for a few hours to celebrate me. I also think, to an extent, it's none of her business what I choose to forgive my boyfriend for. He is not abusive in any way, emotionally, physically, or mentally, but even if he was, I don't believe the best plan of action is to isolate your friend. At first, I tried to change plans as much as I could, but with my boyfriend's birthday also being that same weekend, it wasn't working out to where I could please everyone and still enjoy my own birthday. I ended up texting her letting her know that plans had basically all but fallen through. Because with all the changes, most people could not come anymore, and I wasn't going to leave my boyfriend alone on his birthday when he spent my entire birthday spoiling me. She then dropped my gifts off in my mailbox and never texted me back, even when I tried to reach out and say thank you for my gifts, mind you. The main gift was a clearly second-hand book about women who love too much that basically talked about how weak, broken, and stupid I am. To this day, I have not heard from her. I can't tell if I oughta for letting this friendship go, but I also don't feel like I've done anything wrong. Side note, for the last three years, I've gone out of my way to be with her on her birthday. Last year, we went to a four-day festival for her birthday and a dinner when we got home. The year before that, I flew down to Florida for her birthday, helped her pack her entire apartment, and drove back with her. The year before that, I drove 14 hours to New Orleans for her B-Day two weeks after my boyfriend of four years broke up with me randomly. Am I the jerk for having a tone in my voice? Context. I 24F started a full-time job this week. I'm also a full-time student taking classes online. My fiancé 25M and I have a 15-month-old. In the morning, I get up at 4.30 a.m. make the coffee for us make my fiancé's lunch, get myself ready, get the baby ready, and off to daycare. I drop him off, go to work, come home, start dinner while holding a usually screaming baby. My fiancé will get home, say hello to us, then sit down for the rest of the night. He is blue-collar and does a lot of physical labor during the day, and he is understandably tired. He works nine-hour shifts with a one-hour commute each way, so he's gone eleven hours a day. I do all the housework, I do all the care for our son. I can count on one hand the amount of times he's changed a diaper, given him a bath, or put him to bed. He's never cooked dinner, helped with the dishes, or done his own laundry. He doesn't want to go to the grocery store, to the park, for walks. On the weekends he sleeps or works on his motorcycle or various vehicles. I feel burnt out every day. I feel sad that my partner shows no interest in our son or me. For the last 15 months he has paid all the bills, but before that we did 5050 on everything. Today he got home and my son was having a meltdown. I was trying to cook and console him. I also started my period today and was wearing a beautiful white dress that I bought yesterday. The first new piece of clothing I've bought for myself since having our son, and I was worried I was bleeding through the tampon onto this dress. I set our son down and ran to the bathroom to change my tampon. While I am in the bathroom, my fiancé makes a comment that the pasta which was boiling was steaming pretty hard. I replied back that it was fine. 
I hear our son crying again and I'm trying to hurry as his dad does not comfort him if he's upset. My fiancé then said, F you, you're a stupid bitch. I was genuinely confused and he screamed at me that I had an attitude when I was in the bathroom. I explained that the tone wasn't intentional and what I was doing. He called me a cunt, didn't eat dinner and went to bed. An hour later I take my son in to say goodnight to his dad. I'm sitting on the bed holding our son and he pushes me off the bed, calls me a bitch for not apologizing, and tells me to move out. I am sitting in the living room crying. Was I deserving of this? I feel like a failure as a mother and a partner.